Well, I'm Gina Suarez, and I came to this church in July from a small little church in Tuscaloosa, and I came in here starving, and Pastor Rick was doing his teaching on discipleship, and I could not believe how many people were in this room for that. I hadn't been to Sunday school in years. I hadn't been to a Bible study in years. So I sat here and not only was I being fed, but I was just amazed at the crowd in here. And then Pastor Rick came and exhorted us to worship. I had never seen that before. I love the order of service here. And then Pastor Marcos on communion. It happened to be the beginning of July. Um, so he gave a beautiful mini sermon, that's what I call them, on communion, on repentance, on giving. And I thought that was it. And then Pastor Mark comes up and forget about it. I, I could not believe what time it was and he was still preaching. <laughs> and I only say that because my little church, I was in and out in an hour and 15 minutes. That always included the sermon, music, well worship, and communion every single Sunday. So I was in and out. So for me to be in here, goodness, what, three hours that day? Forget about it. I told Marion and um, Dale, because they're good friends of mine for many, many years, that I am just filled to the brim. I cannot believe the service I just attended. So I was, I'm just so grateful that you guys have allowed me to become a member I really had my doubts because, as I've told your wife, I tend to speak my mind, and she assured me there are a lot of people here that do that, so don't worry, Gina. <laughs> so, I will say that um, I think it's adorable and precious that my claim to fame, and maybe Miss Suzanne as well, is that we're old people. Um, Pastor Mark made that clear, and so did Karen. <laughs> And I just think that's so precious. I don't care. I still have dark hair. So, um, let me tell you about a little of my wretchedness. Um, I come from a Catholic background, and I thought I was a good person. And then a friend invited me to a Presbyterian church and she was gonna sing, so I said, okay, I'll go. And I had never heard preaching like that before from a Catholic background. Uh, you know, the ritual mass and all of that, up and down, up and down. So um, I was really, the Lord really spoke to my heart. Um, wow, I became a member of that church. I was with them nine years. And I loved the church. They did teach the Bible. Um, so I love that. I had never read the Bible. I, I'd never learned of it. So it, it was just beautiful to me and certainly spoke to my heart and thrilled me. And I wanted to learn more and more and more. Um, however, I ended up leaving that church because I wanted to be a part of my daughter's attendance at church, and she was attending a faith assembly, um, a charismatic church in Orlando. So I started to go there, and I was enjoying the performances of music, because that's what it is. Um, I thought it was great that they had this massive choir, um, the, the plays that they had during the year for Easter and Christmas. I thought that was such a great tool. Then in 2011, 
my mother died. And I stopped going to church, not because I lost faith in God. Um, I just, it, I wasn't being fed, bottom line. I, it was still a charismatic church, another church, not faith assembly. And um, I just felt empty when I went there. I kept hearing the same thing over and over again, just speaking in tongues, which just felt so fake to me. So I, I knew I could not continue to go. So I stayed home for two years. I didn't go to church, but I continued to fellowship with my friends and I continued to do the abortion ministry. I was available to them whenever they needed me. Um, but then I felt a big desire to find a church. So I wanted to be a part of a church family. And so I went to a few churches. I ended up at um, Grace Church in Tuscola. And I wanted to be in a reformed church. I have wonderful reformed friends, so my heart was totally changed during my years of ministry at the abortion clinic. Um, I'm sure many of you know Patty and Scott Smith. Um, they were my mentors. And so eventually I saw the error of my ways and the errors of the churches that I was attending. And so I decided to settle at that little church. Um, but after a while, I just knew. Now, I knew Dale attended here. I know Jackie Benkin. Um, I know Jolie from my old neighborhood in Orlando because my daughter grew up with them. I had met Pastor Marcos many years ago. His mother also. Um, ministered at the abortion clinic that I ministered at. Um, so, you know, it was like, I think you came to my house and did extermination once. Oh. <laughs> In Chuliota, right? I think, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. So anyway, one weekend I decided, um, why don't you check out Cornerstone? But I knew that was God, you know, later on, especially because I fell in love with this church. So I knew that was the Lord. And um, the following Sunday, I went back to Grace, and I told the pastor, I'm not going to be coming back. And he was, of course, wondering why, but I didn't, I didn't really want to tell him I'm not being fed here. So um, he asked me the name of the church, and right away, you know, that look that you get when you say you go Tent Cornerstone. <laughs> so I said, I know all about them. I've known for many years, and that's all in the past. They got through it. So um, I came back here, and... Um, I didn't want to leave Pastor Rick's class because it was my first encounter, even though I kept hearing from so many people, you need to go to essentials, but I didn't want to leave. So I gave in and said, okay, at the end of the um, discipleship class, I'll go to essentials. Now I don't want to leave his class because <laughs> it's just wonderful. If you haven't attended, today it was packed and it was awesome. But anyway, um, yes, I was pretty wretched. I, I lived, according to my rules, I lived with a man for many years. Um, I got married. This was my second marriage. Eventually, we had a daughter, and um, we got married. But he was a bad man. And much worse than I ever imagined. I'm not gonna go into details, but I needed to get away from him. And I did. Uh, he went to jail, but I had to leave my home with my children. I had to find a place to live. And I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life and my kids. 
And I was at work and one of my coworkers came in and started talking about how her life is, um, relationship with her husband is so wonderful and how much greater it became when um, they came to know the Lord. I had never heard that expression, came to know the Lord. So I was just soaking in everything she was telling me and I started to cry. And here I'm at work, face full of makeup. I don't wear makeup anymore, obviously. And I was crying the rest of the day. Um, the things she was saying I had never heard before. And, and at the time I didn't feel conviction. At the time I felt I want what she has. And I know that it was the Spirit of God just pouring all over me that day. And so I went home and I told the kids, something happened to me today, guys. And I think it's going to change our lives. And I'm going to stop cursing. I was really bad about that. Um, it was just the way that I was. I was wretched and sinful and uh, full of evil. But I knew that day that God changed my heart. He changed my mind. He changed my mouth. Um, and so we, I didn't know what church to attend. So my daughter and I had been to the um, naval base in Orlando. So I went there. I didn't look for any church. I didn't ask anybody. We just went there. And it was very lively. It was non-denominational, charismatic. But I knew that I wanted to be around God's people. I wanted to be in a place of worship. And slowly but surely, I ended up at University Presbyterian Church, um, which was totally Bible-driven. The pastor taught also. I, I love being in Sunday school. I learned so much about the Lord. Um, and then I started doing my wanderings around different churches. I should have just stayed at UPC. But anyway, I'm here today, and I'm so grateful the Lord has rescued me. Um, my children are still not saved. They're charismatic and Catholic. And I have a son that is just out of church because he got tired of hearing we need your money for this, we need your money for that, or the drama on stage with pastors that perform uh, rather than teach. So um, I'm here to stay, unless you guys throw me out for some reason or other. Um, I love this church. I am really honored and feel so privileged that you have allowed me to become a member. I've never heard the kind of preaching and teaching that I hear here ever. And I got saved in 94. That's a long time. So by the time I came here, you know, I was really famished. And I'm just grateful to be here, that the Lord has brought me to this home of believers and to these amazing pastors that I've grown to love. Um, I remember the first time around you had a baptism in October. And I said, I still wasn't ready. And I'm like, I'm not going to that. I'm not ready for that. And even though I love coming here, but I just wasn't ready. And then just weeks after weeks and weeks of attendance, months. I mean, July is a long time away. I just felt such a love for you people and for the pastors and getting to know so many of you uh, during the morning Bible study um, and being in the essentials class. And it's just, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by God's goodness. I'm grateful to be here. And um, I hope the Lord uses me some way. Um, I have really bad knees, um, hips, back, neck, hands, feet, everything is arthritis. So I'm hoping that um, the Lord will use me in however way he desires and that I honor him with my life here and my service to you. And I love you guys. <laughs>